Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to my workshop. Now, if you're like me, you've probably got boxes and boxes and boxes of spares and hardware sitting in your cupboards, cluttering up your workshop. Well, today I'm going to solve that. Let's get tinkering. I'm hoping to find a home for everything in these boxes. This cupboard was once a kitchen wall unit. And by the time I've finished, it will store all of my hardware. I'm trying to do this project on a budget. It is, after all, just for the workshop. So I hope to be able to make the whole storage solution from two sheets of quarter inch MDF. I'm going to be using some unconventional techniques to keep the costs down and to keep the build simple. So stick around to see if it all works out. My first job is to get these sheets cut down into something a bit more manageable. I lay some old pallet wood on the floor to raise the MDF off the floor. I then use the other piece of MDF as a long straight edge, which I'll need for the circular saw. These long pieces have been cut to be slightly wider than they're needed. They'll be trimmed to size once the pieces are at a manageable size to put onto the table saw. I have two boards here clamped on top of each other and I'm cutting these in two. I've now got eight four foot boards that are just a little bit wider than the internal width of the cupboards that I'm going to be putting them in. I'm going to cut them down precisely on the table saw and these pieces will make the fronts, the bases and the backs of my parts trays. These two long pieces will be used to make most of the sides of my parts trays. I'm being guided by a cutting list that I sketched out in my notepad. The idea is I want to cut all of the things to the same size together so that I only have to move the fence once for each size of cut. That way everything will be identical. Prevent the work from getting trapped between the fence and the blade when I'm using the sliding table. I'm using my little magnetic inclinometer as a stop block. So I'll push the wood up to that to make my cuts and use that as a reference so that everything's exactly the same size. I no longer need the doors on these cupboards, so I'll take them off. At the bottom of these cupboards will be two boxes. The length of these boxes is the internal dimension of the cupboard minus two thicknesses of the board plus little, little wiggle room. So I'm going to mark where the thickness of the board is and then use the kerf of the blade to give me the wiggle room, which would be about three millimetres. With the board in place, I set my flag stop so that I can cut the next board exactly the same. I do the same for the remainder of the boards, but these are one board thickness longer than the previous two. Cut four pieces at 100 millimetres wide these will make the fronts and backs of the box and will go at the bottom of the cupboard. I cut the sides of the boxes to length. I just need to trim these boards because I realised that I've made them six millimetres too long. Okay, quick time out. I cut all these boards according to the cutting list. I then did a very quick test fit and thought they all needed to be six millimetres narrower. So I trimmed them all by six millimetres. It was only when I started gluing up that I realised that I was wrong and my cutting list was correct. And now everything was six millimetres too short. This was going to have to change the way that all of these parts trays were going to fit inside the cupboard. It's a bit of a disappointment and I think it shows that when something's slightly wrong and you think you know best when you're cutting actually doing the job that sometimes you're not and it's worth just stepping back and having a think why are my drawings different to what I think I need to do. We've all done it, me too many times. The boxes and parts trays will be made mainly using dado joints so I set the blade to 3mm, that's half the thickness of the board, and using a scrap of the same board against the fence, I set the fence to the correct distance for the first cut. I make this cut for all the boards. I then swap out the spacer for my most used jig, a thin strip which is the same thickness as the kerf of the table saw blade, and make a second cut on each board. I now just need to position the fence to remove this central piece. I was originally going to use mitres for this box, but I've decided that I'll just use butt joints. So I added these little strengthening bars in the corners. This triples the surface area of glue on these butt joints, so it should significantly increase the strength. Now, anyone that's seen my video on the strength of butt joints will know what I'm going to do next, and you'll know how much difference it makes. 
just going to add some CA glue to the end grain here. And this isn't to strengthen the glue joint, it's to strengthen the material. The parts trays need a dado at each end of the board. Now I've set my blade so that it's half the thickness of this board. I've set this board in so that it's about the thickness of one of these, although it's arbitrary, away from the edge. And I'm going to make my first pass. I'm going to flip the board round and then make another pass at the other end. And I'll do that for all the boards. Once I've done that, I'll then take this out, replace it with this, which is the thickness of the curve, push that there, slide this in, and then take another pass. And then that'll leave me with a thin strip that I can manually adjust this to um, remove that thin strip, and then I'll have nice dados in all the boards. I've got 20 odd of these to make, so let's get cracking. Now all that remains is to cut out the little bit of waste left in the middle. Now this approach gives me perfect dados every time. I can't actually push this all the way forwards because it's got a little label on it and that label thickness is just a little bit too much for it to go into this hole so I have to remove this if I was fitting this piece, which I'm not. Now I also need to run a groove along the back of these boards in exactly the same way. I've added a little bit of blue tape just to stop this from falling off and hitting the blade and going flying off. That'll just keep it safe. The blue tape is above the height of this board so it shouldn't get in the way. I've dry fitted the back and sides of this tray. Now I'm ready for glue up. I then glued the front on using some weights as clamping pressure. I'll come back and add some additional bracing once this has dried. Now if you've seen my video on butt jointing MDF, you'll know that the glue is a lot stronger than the material. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend it. The parts trays are various heights, and here I'm using my fin strip push block to cut some of the backs of the trays. And these are the fronts. Time for a quick update. I really do need to get this finished. You guys are lucky you only see the highlights. I've been at this now for a couple of weeks. I've got 10 of the parts trays all glued up and they've been fitted into the cabinet. I've got another 11 parts trays to still glue up. They're taking quite a lot of time because the temperatures have really dropped in the UK. It's about four or five degrees Celsius in my workshop. And that means that the glue's taking longer to set. I also only have about six or seven suitable clamps that I can use because of the size of the bits that need gluing together. And because it can't all be glued together in one go, it's also extending how long it's taking to get all this stuff glued up. But I will get them finished. Please carry on watching. You'll help me get through this. My original plan was to use the lip on the sides of these trays along with some strips that were the same height as the trays to create a groove in the cabinet that would allow me to move the trays in and out. But because I made these trays six millimeters too narrow, it means that that plan's not gonna work anymore because I've got too big a gap. So what I've done instead is I've created the same slider, but with an extra bit on top, just to give me that space that I need for the trays to fit. And one of those both sides, I've got enough room so that the trays stay on the rails. It's not the original plan, but it'll work okay. I use a fin rule and a scrap to get the distance right, and then screw the slider in place on the side of the cabinet. Well, this has taken a lot longer than expected, but I've now got all of the parts trays assembled and glued together, and I've fitted all of the runners into the cupboard, ready for fitting the parts trays. But before I do that, I want to paint the runners and I want to paint the parts trays. 
So that's the next step and we're almost there. Keep watching to see how it turns out. There's nothing fancy here. I'm just going to give the runners a quick coat of white emulsion paint just to match the rest of the cupboard. I painted the front of all of the drawers a beautiful turquoise, again in an emulsion. I designed and 3D printed some parts label holders. These are going to be glued to the front of the parts tray so that I know what's in each tray. Now I just need to find them. I made up this little jig out of a bit of scrap MDF and it's going to be used to go over the corner of the parts trays so that I can position the parts labels in exactly the same place on each tray. Well I've finally done it. I spent a day going through all of my old hardware and putting it into these parts trays. I've yet to build proper inserts for the parts trays so I can organise everything really easily and I'm relying on the um, organisers I had in the boxes that I was using before. But now at least they're only a single layer thick and they're all labelled up so I know exactly where things are. So it should make life in the workshop a lot easier. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to subscribe and click the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.